government devotee, became governor. And he transformed himself into someone who embraces government overreach and issues unilateral, excuse me, unilateral decrees like it's going out of style. The latest example of that autocracy coming this past week, when Ron DeSantis suspended a state attorney who said he would not enforce Florida's new restrictions on abortion and transgender health care. That now suspended state attorney, Andrew Warren, responding to the governor's edict. I was shocked at the blatant violation of one of the most fundamental principles of our democracy, that the people, the voters, get to elect elected officials. I've been elected twice to serve as state attorney, and I've served as state attorney, and I've done it well. Crime is down. We're protecting people's rights. If the governor thinks he can do a better job, then he should run for state attorney, not president. DeSantis saying he made this decision because Warren was picking and choosing which laws to enforce. But let's be clear, Warren had not acted on his pledge yet. In fact, no cases tied to Florida's new abortion law, for example, had even been brought to his office. DeSantis went after him for Warren's ideas and for his intentions. And that's why many of his critics are calling the move authoritarian. Detractors gathering this week to protest what they say is DeSantis's abuse of power. Joining me now for more is the Hillsborough County State Attorney, Andrew Warren. Andrew, good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to have you on my show. Listen, DeSantis is claiming that he's justified to remove you from office due to, quote, neglect of duty. I read that executive order. I'm a former prosecutor. I understand where you are seated in terms of what you're, what you're doing. But to DeSantis's point, are there limits to the exercise of your prosecutorial discretion? Well, let's be clear. This isn't about anything that I've done. This is about what I said. The statements that I signed on to were value statements expressing my opposition to legislation that was being considered and passed that was violating people's constitutional rights. The two issues involved here, one is abortion and the 15 week ban that in Florida has been ruled unconstitutional. The second piece of legislation or the second issue is about gender affirming health care. And it's a law that doesn't even exist in Florida yet. So I'm being punished not only for cases that haven't come before me, but for cases on laws that don't even exist or aren't even valid in the state of Florida. This is Orwellian thought police where I'm being punished for not enforcing laws that aren't even on the books yet. Andrew, you've been elected on two separate occasions to the office of state attorney by the voters in your jurisdiction. They exercised their right to vote and they chose you to be the top prosecutor where they live. What's the point of voters electing a prosecutor like you if a governor can just remove that prosecutor or that state attorney if they don't agree with the exercise of prosecutorial discretion? Well, Katie, that's the $25,000 question, right? I mean, for the past two years, we've heard nearly half of America Baseless, baselessly complaining about a stolen election. You want to see an election that was actually stolen? Look no further, because the governor has stolen the position of state attorney away from the voters of Hillsborough County. This is the erosion of our democracy. This is the violation of the sacred trust of democracy. Andrew, I think a lot of people need to know this, that the Florida Senate actually has to end up voting on what happens to you, the DeSantis decision to remove you from office. The next legislative session likely won't even convene until February or March of next year, 2023. What are your options between now and then? Well, first of all, this happened so quickly. I mean, I was blindsided by this coup. An armed deputy came into my office and told me I had to leave wasn't able to gather my things, wasn't able to talk to my staff, wasn't even able to look at the order that this was based on. Just, I was worried I was gonna be put into handcuffs and dragged out of my own office. But let, let's be clear, we are gonna fight back against this illegal order and fight hard. We will end up launching a thorough defense of our democracy that eviscerates this nonsensical and illegal order by the governor. Andrew, quickly, I did want to highlight this because I think it's important for the viewers to understand. You've just explained that you were actually escorted out of your office by, was it police officers, Andrew? Like you were literally escorted out of your office? Yes, by a sheriff's deputy. Unbelievable. The, and I want everybody I'm, I'm to know this as my well. Along with I'm you. Sorry. I, no, I'm like, Katie, I'm right there with you. I mean, it doesn't, it's something that you would see happen in Russia or China or North Korea, where the king, 
sends in his police to remove a duly elected official from office with no due process, with no basis, just armed guard, get out. I'm disregarding the will of the people and I'm putting my own person in. And it goes back to the question you asked at the top. I mean, if the governor can do this, then why even have elections? What's the point? And Andrew, to your point, and this is what I wanted to highlight, you're escorted out of your office with by, by, by a sheriff. The person who was appointed by Ron DeSantis to replace you in this temporary suspension that exists is a county court judge named Susan Lopez. She's a judicial appointee by Ron DeSantis. She supported your opponent, the prior state attorney in Hillsborough County, Mark Ober, who lost the election to you. And she listed Ober as a reference on her 2021 judicial application. It sounds like Ron DeSantis handpicked exactly who he wanted to be in place to do what he wanted to do. What's your reaction to that? It, Katie, you're absolutely right. And not only did he handpick who he wanted, he handpicked someone that the voters didn't want. Look, the voters, if, if they want to take me out of office, if they decide that they don't want me to be their state attorney, that's fine. But this is not how democracy works, that the voters pick me based on my vision for criminal justice and sharing my values and trusting my judgment. And then the executive comes in and says, nope, don't care, doesn't matter. I'm going to put in the opponent who lost or the stooge of the opponent who lost or whoever the handpicked successor is, who's not who the people wanted. Well, Andrew, we're going to be watching this very carefully. Again, I'm a former prosecutor here in Florida, two different counties. I'm very concerned about this, and I definitely want to make sure that our viewers know what ends up happening with you. Andrew Warren, the Hillsborough County State Attorney, we appreciate you being here this morning. Thanks so much, Katie. And I just say people can come to support at andrewwarrenfl.com, andrewwarrenfl.com, to show their support and support democracy. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew.